Good evening and welcome to our Covington City Council special meeting. We are here for Tuesday, November 22nd. This special meeting is being held in person and virtually telephonically. With that, we'll call the study session to order. And Krista, if you'd like to call the roll. Council Member Soltis. Council Member Porter. Here. Council Member Hartsock. Here. Council Member Hartkhausen. Present. Council Member Simomo. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Smith. Mayor Wagner. I am here. I have a quorum, Your Honor. Thank you. And we don't need to excuse Sean since this is a study okay. session. With that, we have one item for discussion tonight, and that is the strategic planning process. And I'll turn that over to our city manager, Regan Bolton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for being here, everyone. Uh, I did talk to Sean a little earlier today, uh, and he's hopeful to be able to join this meeting a, a little bit later. So he's down in California with family. Uh, so as you know, we did uh, hold a meeting, I think the last time we did this was end of September, and so we got through two of our four strategic priorities. So tonight we'll pick up on strategic priority number three. Once we have the action items from council developed for uh, the priority three and four, uh, staff will go back, review those, refine them a little bit. Uh, there might be some things we, we add in, some additional ones that then we'll bring back to council and continue that discussion for eventual approval of our new strategic plan. So with that, Selena, are you able to yeah. share that up there? And we'll uh, start going on this. The, the next strategic priority is number three, a commitment to health and safety. The objective statement that council chose is grow Covington as a community where people are safe, live an active life, engage in the community, and have access to city and all have access to city and all have, I think we need to fix that. <laughs> and all have access to city and social resources. We'll, we'll edit yeah, that Yeah, I'll make sure. I'll double yeah. check that. Sorry. <laughs> it's like, is that really what we came our final? <laughs> so yeah. we're thinking and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We made sure to go all. I, I'm a, what I printed. So it, it was a oh yeah, anyway. this is from Sept. This is the one. I'll double check. Yeah. I thought it actually got it on the slide. Yeah, it's on, it's it's on slide. Slide. We'll, I'll, I'll we'll confirm it. We've got it on the bottom actually. We're at number three. Yep. So here it is. Girl Covington is a community where people are safe, live an active life, engaged in the community, and all have access to city. Mm -hmm. That's it. We just haven't added it to that. Here. I'm do that right <laughs> slide now. yet. So um, as we go through these um, and creating these action items, um, ask yourself as you come up with them is how would we measure that? How do we measure if we've accomplished that action item? Because this is really where we get into the nuts and bolts of, of, okay, this is the action item and this is how we know we accomplished it. So with that, we can just uh, start opening it up. Selena will type them up there and there's a disclaimer. We can't make kind of Selena's yeah. typing. Yep. So well, that's no, that, yeah. no spelling, no grammar. Can't yet. do that. Uh, but we'll, we'll fix it. We will fix it. Um, so yeah, we'll just open it up to the room now, Mayor, if that's okay. And um, anyone can uh, throw up a thing. Yeah, a couple. Um, solicit and provide updates to council from local human service organizations so we can monitor food insecurity, homelessness, et cetera. I'm not going to get that. Oh, uh, that's a that's a great one. Any uh, further development or thoughts on that item? I have one very similar to that, but it's um, actually on number four. So when we get there, I'll just okay. Great. And I have one more. Um, coordinate events that get folks outside, like neighborhood walking events with police officers, council members, car etc. Can you see the beginning of it again? I didn't hear. Coordinate events oh. that get folks outside. Awesome. Like neighborhood walking events with police officers, council members, karma. So not that karma probably mm -hmm. walks very far. <laughs> karma has trouble walking very far. Um, 
Jennifer, on that first one you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, the human service organizations, are you thinking of the ones that we fund? Those ones? Okay. I am, and it doesn't have to be those, but it would likely be those. Like and Valley Cities maybe too, because they're providing some Yeah, services because there. they should have a, a pulse. And it would be interesting because we could use the information and compare right. it and see if right. things are getting okay. better or worse. So maybe um, any um, human service provider that's working within the community mm -hmm. or funded by something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Good. Thanks, Jennifer. Uh, any other thoughts on this one? On on that particular item or on uh, on, on new action on this priority? Okay, I have I have a couple. Excellent. Um, I was looking at this and thinking about social services and engaging the community. How are we engaging our seniors? Um, so I, I wrote, develop a quarterly event for seniors to share safety information, overview of parks and recreation activities, provide guest speakers and resource booths. Um, I don't know how much our seniors are attending the resource events because their needs are gonna be different than their, they, well, they do have the food insecurity, but they're not uh, looking for childcare and they usually have the medical dental covered. Um, so I think that that's measurable. Um, that, well, sorry, I was trying yeah. to capture, you prefer parks and rec resources and you have a third. Guest speakers. Oh, guest speakers. Mm -hmm. and, and resource food. Debbie, when you suggested that they're not attending the resource event, are you talking about our, our new monthly one that we're doing? Mm -hmm. I don't know the numbers actually, but I looked at the types of services that are being represented right. by that event, and domestic violence certainly could apply to to, to the seniors and the food insecurity. Yeah, there's but the a others, yeah, interest. by Maple Place and um, some of the others are are more directly. Well, and, and it's a good thought because I don't know that we really expanded that into our senior community. I don't mm -hmm. think that was the lens in which those were developed, so we could expand that. I'll just say that I believe we had five people. Um, participate in the event in November. The idea now from Julie is to rotate with the senior center and, or sorry, she keeps saying senior yeah. center, but um, the different um, senior apartments and other apartment companies. And so this would be a good venue, a venue, I, I, event, mm -hmm. this venue I don't know yet where we would hold it, but to get seniors from different, because we've got all the different senior housing mm -hmm. available, and then we've got seniors out in into the other uh, developments, but where they've got a place to gather, um, where it's directed for them, speakers uh, to talk about this time of year could be talking about the enrollment that you all put for the commercials for <laughs> that, you know, the Medicaid insurance or Medicare, Medicare insurance. Um, so, and then the other one was um, to hold a biannual open house, similar to the, the Let's Talk Public Safety. Mm -hmm but target it towards the HOA liaisons that we know of. I know um, Krista has a list. And apartment managers, senior living complex managers, so we've got that audience to discuss crime trends, the importance of neighborhood watch programs. So I think we've tried with the neighborhood, neighborhood night out to talk about um, neighborhood watch programs mm -hmm. But we still get a lot of complaints directed back at what is the city doing about crime and what are what are the police doing about crime. Um, so this is more around safety and how we can teach our HOAs and the other complexes. So we've got apartments with apartment managers that may have a, a liaison or be a liaison, and then the senior housing managers get that group together to talk about mm -hmm. how to. How do we teach everyone about neighbor the importance of neighborhood watch? Because yeah. you've got eyes on your neighbors, but the police can't have eyes on all neighborhoods at all times. Are you thinking with that, Debbie? It's something like we did with the street meetings where we go out to them and do it, or something where we invite everybody in? We could do either. I kind of thought about this being um, like the open houses that we held here but targeting those specific liaisons right. that would cover those different areas. Okay. Um, but doing it out in, you know, maybe rotating around the community. Mm -hmm. 
there's a pillow of that one that you can see. But if you go in the future, there's a few of them. There's a few of them, but how many of the HOAs are doing their annual meetings in person versus on Zoom these days? Are they still I, don't, I don't know that. I, I know the meeting um, Beth and Debbie and I attended the other day was virtual. So I, I think it's probably a pretty good mix. Um, yeah, I, I think they're probably right. Yeah. I, I think um, there's obviously some logistical issues with that that um, that many different entities to do them all separately. We we need to really divide and conquer. And, uh, you know, that would be 13 to 15 HOAs and several apartment complexes and, and whatnot. So that, that would be a lot of work that we can do, but- uh, know, I was envisioning this being, getting them all one, together. Okay. Yeah, just not the, separately, yeah. but gotcha. you know, as many HOAs okay. that we could get represented. Get some invitations get, out to everybody. Yeah, get relationships with the apartment managers and um, senior. So maybe maybe increase uh, social media presence of our positive public safety. I, I know we push out quite a bit um, of what our police are doing, yeah. but there's, you know. But like, anyway, if what if what I think Carla would be hesitant to have a, a scheduled post uh, just because she, she tailors those to what posts are coming up and what the trends are happening and things like that. But but at least like um, increase social media presence in in a positive light. You know, that's super, if that works. I mean, I get, but I guess I kind of like we're doing one or like we talk about more statistics, not just from an individual yeah. event and specific to public safety. Yeah, yeah like well, I'm talking about like, you know, hey, good luck to the, you know, the each kind of big thing we do, like, um, you know, all of our um, shopping emphasis as we do, right. and certain rest, right. we, we put all that out. Mm -hmm. So I, I think. Well, not everything, because, you know, they've got stuff happening all day, but. Uh, yeah well and and tying it in with like the 9 9 p.m routine right mm -hmm. uh we used to push that out of the order we are so the okay. something like that is a, a good way to connect that to it so do you mind including that on yeah the 9 p.m routine yeah. yeah check your mail yeah, right. Right. Well, it, it's amazing. Um, Adam was just telling us the other day just that people aren't doing these things, that thieves are going and just sliding windows open because they're not locked at the night and going in and stealing stuff while people are in their homes, right? Mm -hmm. Um, it's happened a couple of times the last couple of weeks, and it's like, we need to remind people to lock their windows. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. I, yeah, I can barely get my windows open, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, uh, yes, good thought. I know we're already doing this, but you never know what the future may hold in leadership mm -hmm. um, in the organization. So, I would say continue to partner with the chamber. And local health organizations such as Multi Care, Valley Medical, and stuff for like the Makers Market, the um, health and wellness fair that was put on mm -hmm. um, to help get more people in Covington to come to a community event. Uh, because I I know that both Valley, I know Multi Care was there. I don't believe that. I don't know if Valley was at the Makers Market or not, but. 
getting them involved and right. keeping them there that draws people to those organizations. Yep. I know at Kids Fest they're involved, uh, but but I think kind of building off that, there's some cool opportunity to um, really partner with MultiCare and Valley to do more around health and safety in the community, right? Uh, as opposed to th th they're here and people are using yeah. them, but but being really uh, intentional about making sure people know what services they have available and, and things like that. So and MultiCare used to do that. A lot and yeah. Valley when they had yeah. when like when yeah. Hugh Kadamo was there and then yeah that really died off when he left. So. Yep, and then in the '90s, Valley was extremely involved in Covington Days. Okay. And, and I think we're in a good position right now as a city to start those things. Um, with Cetus, we've we've got Multicare and Valley really involved and engaged. And in our new downtown association, we started working on. They're both really excited to be involved in that. So I, I think that's a good. Uh, stepping off point to do this as well. That's good. Yeah, I'd like to see them get more involved again. I just want to point out we did use that action item um, for strategic priority three, partner with Valley and Multi Care on Healthy Living Campaign. So maybe we could. Move which that. which priority are you on? On number three, we could use. Oh, this. I think you're reading the staff suggestions mm -hmm. that we put. Oh, yeah. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Well. Won't we incorporate those? Yeah, well? so so okay. what we'll do, we wanted to first get all of councils. Okay. And then we'll incorporate some of staffs and bring them back to you. Okay. Uh, yeah, for them. Who provides the helmets? Is that Mary Bridge? Uh, they have done that in the past. Uh, do you recall who, who does that? Or? Kiwanis does also. Yeah, Kiwanis yeah, has I, worked to I do think that. that's a really great example, yeah. and that should like helmets. happening. Yeah. I mean, I know it was at Kids Fest again. I don't yeah. think it's going anywhere, but I think the, the I time we do it is at Kids Fest. Yeah. Coles has done it in the past mm -hmm. also. Okay. The Fire Authority and um, Bicycle Rescue for Youth. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. So when I read that, when I read the statement, um, I also think of safe, safe ways that. About safe pathways to school, or yeah, you know, we yeah. talked about like sidewalks, and safe routes to school. Safe routes. <laughs> There's too many. <laughs> anyway, um, and so, I mean, I know it's sort of an infrastructure thing, less of a cultural program thing, but I don't know if there's a place for that here where we might evaluate, uh, like in my mind, I'd like to be the next year, we evaluate the gaps on not everything, we're not going to get there for sidewalks everywhere, right. but is there a way to complete a sidewalk or have some beacons, like right. where that gap is and how much it will cost so that we can, when we're going yeah. to... I think like a gap analysis yeah. on that is a good... Yeah. Um, and then the other thing I, that popped out to me, and it's, it's kind of mashed, I haven't worked since it very well, but when I think that all have access to city and social resources. I I would like to know where we're at with bridging that gap for people with, uh, I'm thinking of an inclusion, but I'm thinking of people with physical disability or, um, you know, are they, are they able to make it to one of these? And, um, you know, these are all really great, like open houses and right. things, but what if they don't yeah. drive or, you know, and how can we how can we get those types of yeah. that information to people who may not be able to right. get here? Get here. Uh, you know, we're talking about like we're going to install rail. Do we have an, Is there a need for people that may not be able to see or they can't hear? Um, in addition to people of an economic disadvantage, and we could kind of potentially local. access some of them. Through like Meals on Wheels and churches. Mm -hmm. A lot of churches have programs to go to the homes of right. residents that need support either with meals or yeah. pastor visits or whatever and mm -hmm. just drop off maybe even flip some paper that way. To That's a cool idea there. Um, to reach that demographic, uh, tap mm -hmm. into the faith-based community mm -hmm. and ministering that's happening mm -hmm. there with and provide information. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. That was a lot, Cindy. Did you, you have any no, questions? She, she or she did it, 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 
<laughs> yeah, and I'll be we'll be coming back to you in um, January with some data around the population of folks that are disabled within the city and the different. So we'll talk about that. Yeah. And then I think one other thing that I also think about when I think about safety, again, sort of related to infrastructure and the sidewalk scenario is street lighting. And I know this was brought up with several larger communities that are older where we didn't really have any design standards in place and they think of like Burwood, right? Behind like Walmart. before the city was incorporated. Either that before means. the city was incorporated or even as some or right as, and so there wasn't really any kind of standard. And so- well, yeah. You know what I mean? Like we have the, the communities right behind Walmart, which is kind of our right off our downtown area, and there aren't any sidewalks, so very little street lighting. Um, and it, it I mean it is expensive to do, so we'd have to figure out what that might look like. But so so maybe this goes in with what we heard in Kimberly mm -hmm. Street meeting. Mm -hmm. We put an action item on here to um, to assess how how or at least provide information to the neighborhoods that don't have adequate and safe sidewalks mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on how that can be accomplished. Mm -hmm. so and let's do yeah. street lighting too, because Wax Road and 180th, and, mm -hmm. and, right. I mean, part of the portions of 180th down past uh, the old school, there's maybe one, two street lights. Mm -hmm. I know when I go home tonight, there's gonna be maybe a grand total of mm -hmm. three. And those are yeah. all going to be right before Crestwood. Right. So, can you include on there, Selena, yeah. um, that we we provide the information necessary to the specific neighborhoods with with poor walking routes, um, how sidewalks can be developed, and really that's through a uh, local improvement district. So something I'll just kind of add here um, over the next two years as we're going through our comprehensive planning process, one of the requirements is that you have to have an equity lens applied to your um, program, right? So everything that we do, and I might have mentioned this before, I can't remember if it's the planning commission or the council, <laughs> so I apologize if you've heard this one. Um, so something that we're going to be doing as part of our climate action grant is looking at our vulnerable neighborhoods, mm -hmm. and part of that will also be creating an equity tool. The long game and what our ultimate outcome will be is that we will then have our capital program that comes out of our comp plan We'll be able to apply this lens to that and then ultimately be able to say you know this investment will reach this many people kind of on an equity scale to be able to start helping with decision making it so, will it will also help folks that may need to go get get green so is that is that like a median income like it's, a whole, the median it's income? a whole range yeah. of not just income it's okay. equity as far as your ability you know for able-bodied disabled bodies it, if there's, there's, I, I'm not a, an expert in this, but there's about three or four different toolkits that are already kind of being used nationally. Mm -hmm. So we'll be kind of looking through those and figuring out which one that we use, but it'll be like a measuring system that we would apply to decision making with an equity. Thing? No, that's something we're doing as part of our comprehensive planning and a part of our climate. So you guys, so the council and the planning commission, you guys will probably start to see some of this information rolling out mid next year. Um, we have to finish the vulnerability, the climate vulnerability assessment by June of 2023. So definitely by then we'll have some type of equity tool. Then that equity tool rolls into our comprehensive planning to help inform these to help inform these types of decisions. And where does the data come from? Where in Susan? Yes, in the ACS. Yep. I mean, I just I kind of feel like with a well, I mean, I know we have mm -hmm. there's lots of really good reasons to look at it through that lens. But I also just even think of our city footprint and like where our downtown or key areas are. And, and I'm thinking of it like where's the where's the where are the dark places? Like if we were to photograph it at night, where are the areas where there aren't, you know, I mean right. and, and it kind of just is a practical, just from a practicality standpoint. Um, but then maybe from there. Why? Yeah, and I think yes. all of that, you've got to start with that data to yeah. be able to assess yeah. that data. So I think this is a great mm -hmm. goal or action item. I'm just sharing that because mm -hmm. these themes are starting to emerge, right? Mm -hmm. You have these mm -hmm. kind of themes of where do we have gaps? How then do we make decisions on those gaps, right? Mm -hmm. And then how do we inform our, our uh, 
you know, the folks in our cities of how they can participate in building those gaps. So um, I just wanted to share because it's, it's kind of really much aligns with a lot of the work that's been doing. I don't know that we need that information to create these. Yeah, yeah I, I don't. Uh, yeah. th these can overlap <laughs> with that, but I don't think we need those before right. we decide. You know, and remember, this is a five year plan. So we're not doing everything in year one, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> please don't make a yeah, you know, mention that. Um, these things, right? Yeah. yeah. All of it, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Strategic, yeah. strategic plan is a five year, five -year plan. So as we as we strategize, right, when we do things, we're only going to get smarter, right? And, and all these all the work that we did through the pros plan, through the comp planning, and through we'll, public works, and it we'll all evaluated the same. Yeah, it all sure. dovetails. Yeah. So let me ask. Uh, so the objective is to grow confidence in the community where people are safe, live an active life, engage in the community, and have access to social resources. Um, we were, I think we've hit on a lot of those. What about the active life, right? Maybe the safe, safer routes is part of that. Anything else in that regard? I, I would love to see some walking loops. Like, you know, like, I don't know what that means or looks like. Do you attract positive things or do you attract time when you're saying a group of people are going to walk down this route? Like, no, I, I don't. I don't think that attracts crime, but and, and I think there there are some, you know, where you might put some wayfinding signs and mark out mileage so people know how far they're walking, things like that. Yeah. Well, if you put a point two miles, I'm going to be looking for the point two. Yeah. For sure, hundred percent. Um, it's like it's almost almost holding me to want to achieve my best. Yeah. Great idea. Yeah. Okay. I added wayfinding to that. Strategy okay. about gap analysis oh, okay. on walking, safe school, non motorized routes, and wayfinding each other. So, my thought on an active life is to continue to strategize to find funding to build a new aquatic center slash community center, which would help engage. Get that. I mean, I know that's something that. It's Most likely is not going to happen in five years. It could be. We could have somebody move in and just want to give us mm -hmm. money. <laughs> sure, there's a couple awesome. hundred million would be nice, you know. You know, but um, it would be nice to be able to continue to find that. Yeah. Because if we have a full the full build out of what we suggested from our the meetings, it would definitely go a long way. Yeah. I I did like the idea of kind of the downtown. Yeah, don't I mean, we, add it separately. I know we, yeah, just add okay. it in there, uh, uh, whether it's separate or with combined with everyone, it's fine. Just so we have that, because I, I think we, we want our downtown to be walkable. And so if we help create those spaces, that will help. So I do have a question about what the, the suggested list from staff, because it said that some of them are things we're already doing, which we know we are. And some might be a priority from staff. And I know that it talked about develop a special water safety program targeting vulnerable, vulnerable populations. Is that something we're already doing? Like, I mean, I like the idea of being able to support people in that because it is important. So but, we just teach swim lessons. But there, I don't know that we have a specific uh, thing like this that you can have. Oh, okay. I guess I figured it would be like a grant where people, kids. Well, Right, or families that can't afford it. It's oh, develop a special five up water five. safety program targeting vulnerable populations. Uh, we, we could fund it through a grant, or we just don't charge. Right? Well, yeah. how are you? How we want to categorize it? Yeah. We set aside a certain amount of money that we can. Right. There was one um, action item that I read, and I can't remember if it was one or two, but where it talked about um, funding some people within an inability to pay. Yeah, that was up a little bit too. I think. Okay. Yeah, with uh, Valley and multi yeah. yeah. I would also, I would also like to expand that though, because I think one of the things that gets a lot of people in a pickle around here is cold water shock. It's not enough to know how to swim. People yeah. are drowning that were very good swimmers because right. they just went, "Oh, it's a hot day. I'm going to jump in." And next thing you know, right? So, 
I, I know that it's hard to do in a pool, but maybe maybe there's ways to stimulate this simulate that experience or going to having some other kind of an event that we can host because I think that's really important around here. Um, but anyway, that's all right. Any other thoughts on this priority before we move on to the fourth one? I, I do want yeah. to just clarify really quick because I want to make sure we have the language. The object, objective statement we have here and Grove Covington is a community where people are safe, live an active life, engage in the community, and all have access to community and social resources. That was the final mm -hmm. decision. So I want to make sure grammatically stay in there or maybe you can come back to this at the end if there's any. Um, <laughs> okay. And then we should do all the things. So we don't want to go there. I was going to say a word. Well, we can come back to this. I just want to make sure that, like, this this is what was decided. And also, should there be an R before there's is there a is there fragment, but there's still there's no R. Okay, so R O A R E. Yeah. Well, people people are right. safe, live an active life, engaged right. in. So the so R is that um, yeah, engaged in the community because it's not R where right. right. Yeah, I see. It. So maybe we can get through action item four, so we get action okay. items, and then we can try Perfect. to wordsmith this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Strategic priority number four, <laughs> exceptional city services. The objective statement uh, is provide Washington's best municipal services to a visible and engaged city council, responsive staff, and resources to meet the community's needs. That's, so just done? You know, just, uh, just, yeah. I do. I'm like, which one is yeah. Well, if I could follow suit on Jennifer's um, item under priority three, where we talked about the um, service event. Mm -hmm. um, Explicit for that updates to council. Yes. Human service organization. Mm -hmm. So the only thing, and this could be three or four because they, they're closely tied, but it's to do a review of are we provide, are we putting out the right services and are we holding them at the right places? Um, I I had heard that there, the lack of attendance is becoming a little bit apparent or are not, you can correct me if I don't know. Attendance at the events is kind of dwindling. And some provider booths are like, are not getting visited. So, okay, I'm talking about the storehouse because like who else would I hear this from? Um, <laughs> <laughs> as far as city events, I, I think Covington has had a lot. Oh, no, no. I'm talking about resource. the resource events. Resource. Oh, I'll call it resource. resource, resource but that's like but brand new. It, well, it is fairly so we've new. Done our, we've done it twice, and I think the expectation is never that that would be a huge attendance. Okay. That, that it's there for when people need it. All right. Right. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that that's a hard one if you gauge success by attendance. But um, if we gauge it by the fact that we are regularly reviewing, and maybe they are already doing this, and I don't know, but are are do we have the right providers there? Um, are we missing any providers? Or do we have providers there that aren't getting any mm -hmm. hits? And are we at the right location? So I heard that we are moving it next time to Polaris. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's good. I think at least if we're all cognizant that maybe... Maybe a different location will help. And then maybe if we've got a provider there that isn't getting any hits, maybe they can rotate off. But we need in you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so my only thought was that we we do a uh, a regularly scheduled review of the resource event to determine best location and service providers. But it it really could go back to Jennifer's. As mm -hmm. long as we are agreeing that we're going to regularly review it, or that, or that human services will regularly mm -hmm. review. 
I think if it is specific to human service, that human service event, it might best fit under priority three. But if it's okay. more of a general, um, let's review everything, all the services that we provide and assess whether they're still valuable or not, um, programs or events mm -hmm. that we provide. That, that's, a, that's a really good item. Okay. For, yeah. okay. I, I maybe, like that. We do it's both. Monitored. And yeah, stuff, and yeah. so it would help the city decide who we need to keep doing this. And, and we went through that process in determining whether to continue with the outdoor movies and the midday um, events that mm -hmm. they had. And the midday events cost more, and we had 100 to 150 less people each. So we mixed that, right? And so I, that's a good process to go through, I think, mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. and, and just the to let you know, that's a conversation we're having about Sausage and Cider as well, that we're trying to assess whether that is um, just after the pandemic, it's been hard to get cideries, get people back is into it. it. What? Is it, is it a salvageable event? Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll give you the resources yeah. we have or right. not. Yeah, especially with adding the pickleball tournament next year. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Well, then perhaps my my um, item, my action item is already being done and it's done by staff. So, yeah, but I, this is for that event. deliberate. Yeah. So I, I like okay. that. Yeah. yeah. I think that you can add on to that one, but I just did it. Yeah, yeah. I added it okay. to three for the resource mm -hmm. event as the example. And then I added it for just city events. The right levels. I mean, I think there's a better way to say that, but we'll figure that later. Yeah. Awesome. But Thanks, the Debbie. intent is to make sure that the and that the that the events we're providing are meeting the needs of our citizens, and that we're able to resource yeah. them, mm -hmm. and that they're value add, right? Yeah. Okay. And I would say and services. Um, and yeah. Services. That's events, events, programs, and services. services. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. I I had an idea I was throwing out with Harlan and I was it you, Jennifer? I may have shared it with you and you said that Kent was doing something oh, similar. Oh, drinks in the driveway. Yeah, okay, yeah, I, that's what Kent Yeah, does. I was thinking of uh, a host a council member mm -hmm. and um, a resident can sign up to host a council member and it's their responsibility to let their neighborhood mm -hmm. know, I'll have council member mm -hmm. so-and-so here tonight, come ask some questions, that kind of thing. That's a pretty low barrier thing to mm -hmm. organize. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, or, or we do more, more kind of a larger thing than all the council members. Well, mayor, start with mayor. Work over the yeah. Start with the mayor. Do you want to? Mayor, do you want to do that separately? Yeah. Uh, Joe? So I, I know we did this once before, and I, I think it was successful at one of the schools, and then another one just kind of blew us off. But I think we can work with them better is reaching out to the schools and having council members go and um, present things going on in the city, things that they could be involved with, you know, planning of the, uh, the city. So high schools, we, yeah, or... going to the high schools, we could even, I mean, maybe the middle school, yeah. the eighth grade classes. And so they can understand, Hey, when I get to ninth grade, I can do these things right. kind of prep them that way. But something where we can go out to, to mats and then, Cedar Heights for the eighth grade classes and then Kenwood and Kent Light as well. Do they teach like civics classes in that in eighth grade? And uh um, Cedar Heights. I know they're teaching that and just teach it in class. Oh awesome. Yeah, that'd be great. And I know like Ryan has taken a an AP uh, world uh, geography mm -hmm. class and they discuss about how maps make you know, help with certain things, and it might be a good thing for, you know, so we, we, we do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I would I would go with Selena to that to talk about it, but I would I would I would I would prefer Selena to do most of the talking. But you were on council when we went to Kent Lake. Well, yeah, and, and that was and Kent Lake, but Kent Lake was the one that was really attended. Was really, the theater, yeah. yeah, because they excused a bunch of classes to come to. Yeah, genius. Yeah, yeah. Genius. That's a good move. Yeah, that was. Nice. Sure. <laughs> one of the things in a past life for a different city, we used to um, use the schools to provide that outreach. So we would work with the teachers of civics and stuff and say, you can get at, your child can get extra credit if they come to this public meeting. And well, we worked that out. That. Yeah, because yeah, they should, the students showed yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it was so that the parents would come, not oh, just the kids. Okay. Got it. And so <laughs> then you would have the parents and the kids at that certain open house or event mm -hmm. or training we were doing with the community and stuff. Have support to council meetings. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they'll, that mm -hmm. way they've got a yeah. You attend a certain amount, you get, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like the, you get a picture like with, play with or that. that. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my gosh. Anyway. I, I think tagging on to what everybody's talking about is I really like the idea of this um neighborhood leadership conference annual meet with HOAs or mm -hmm. businesses. I mean, because I think that's other like I, when I think of an HOA, I would in a very fairy world, I would think that if we had five or six or seven HOAs and they all had five or six people showing up. We can get to compete with us, you know, a different way, like in person, and then that there's businesses there too, and it's not just. And I don't think we should limit it to HOAs. No, there's no. So well, that's many, what I mean. Like, yeah. I know I keep saying faith based organizations, but seriously, yeah. that's a, like, you grab a ton of people that are yeah. willing yeah. and. Well, I mean, it's. My neighborhood doesn't have an HOA. Well, my right, right. They care about a lot of things. Right. But if, if we can get neighborhood people from each neighborhood, mm -hmm. like I'm sure we all know somebody from every neighborhood or a handful of people, even if there's no the neighborhood away, busybody, or, right? <laughs> or whoever coordinates the passion night, yeah. night, night out. Anyway, my point is, is that you know it might be a good opportunity to actually have like we've got this annual thing we're doing as a community that's not that's separate from National Night Out, and it is driven more towards um, how can we help each other out, not just in the safety. Oh, okay. yeah. I like that idea. Maybe it complements neighborhood networking. Yeah, yeah, something like that. We call it whatever. Yeah. You know, meet you know, meetups mm -hmm. to. What the yeah, we do? Um, I have a couple. One is a plan to improve response and resolution to the Covington Connects app. I know I have a. I feel like I have a different experience every time I use it. Mm -hmm. So I would love to see consistency. Um, I know just because my husband works for city in Newcastle, there they had this target to hit zero. And I think it was this this zero. year. Zero issues. So every day they plow through that list. Yeah. A lot of them are public works oriented, but um it is a difference when you open the Newcastle one versus the Covington one. Just take a look. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you can ask. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we yeah. should put the Newcastle on there. Um, and then the other one, think about a volunteer coordinator position on staff. It's a great way to connect residents to the city, engage and identify leaders and future commission members. Mm -hmm. I know we've always said, you know, it's a lot of work to volunteer for, to coordinate volunteers. Yes, I totally know. I've spent like 20 years doing it. it so it should be a, a staff person or a part time or yeah. you know, it, it can't be another volunteer, right? right. It's It's yeah. got to be someone that is really engaged and going out there and connecting with people and wrangling them up and doing little trainings and um, can connect with all the service groups, you know, because we have our main service groups and then that's, that's it. Jennifer, yeah, so it, that's one of Jennifer's responsibilities, but I think in the vein that you're talking about, she doesn't have the capacity to do, to, yeah. to really do that, but she's coordinating like the Adopt the Street program mm -hmm. and some volunteer projects, you know, that we put together, but not really that kind of uh, issue. So not as much out in the community. Yeah, I yeah. I think if we took her, pulled her off the streets and clean up, she could. But I think it's going to be at least a half a T E mm -hmm. time commitment to do. Yeah, that. and I and I don't mean just clean up stuff. I mean just oh, yeah. all yeah. all kinds of things. It's really a way to identify any leaders in the community and get. 
exponentially grow People that. Are really yeah. And be aware of where the high needs are. Like Line Maple Place will often put out plugs of, you know, we need volunteers for this event or um, food banks or any other uh, nonprofit that's having an event or they need, I need someone every Monday night for food distribution. And so if that person were really keyed into what's happening in the community and they get calls, they can refer them out. Right. But yeah. You know, an idea might be as we're talking about this. So, uh, you know, Carla's still running um, communications all by herself. And, and her and I have been talking about um, adding some help there. This could be a good position for that part-time and the volunteer coordination part-time that something maybe we could work in the next year's budget. Can I ask a question about that? Um, so when we kind of think about that role and we can dive into this more as we unfold, but would that also be, would you see this person also just evaluating like, but even how do you get volunteers? Oh, for sure. Okay. Yeah. The, whole, yeah. the, the whole, whole thing. thing. Okay. Yep. It would be a really proactive approach to volunteerism, yeah. where right now we're, we're not, right? We, we do a couple of service projects that we organize, and then some of the service clubs do some. But yeah, this would be a whole new. Right. Whole new and you want to be able to pull not just from kind of your usual group, mm -hmm. but larger or, set, yes. right? And, and also, like, like, like yeah. Eagle Scout projects, right? Mm -hmm. They'll come to us and uh, we're trying to come up with ideas and, and totally. you know, but totally. yeah. yeah. Cool. There's also a, a fair number of people that are looking for community service hours. Mm -hmm. So I know that like yeah. real life church gets calls all the time and they they do play some to work in the garden and, and around the church, but um that's kind of a, a separate because you may have to kind of help that person track their hours. Right. Right. So, so, since we're maybe planting those seeds, especially with the coming season next, I think I know we we still have an opportunity to add code enforcement in that area because I know that there's a lot of things that are drive by it every day. The handful of homes, and you know, we all know where we are, mm -hmm. and it is hard to really follow up and do the right thing to kind of get those move those because we want to be. Right. Fair, but at the same time, it also requires a lot of staff time to follow up. But it is a service that our community expects of us. If somebody's breaking the code, yeah. that, that take we take care of it. it. I yeah. mean, in in a reasonable time, right? Not necessarily tomorrow, but yeah. you know. Uh, and we've heard it in different parts of the area. I think as we grow, we need to really go. It's not enough to say, "Well, we don't have." This. We need to get this, something, someone yeah. in place. Mm -hmm. Hopefully yeah. that, how long has Christine been on? So, so Brian, I'll just back up real quick. Brian was operating at a half time capacity mm -hmm. oh, yeah, up no, until just... earlier this year. And then we hired Christine. So she's been with us, I think, till, since June. Mm -hmm. And now Brian's full, transitioning full-time code compliance, Christine. Mm -hmm. So now we have two folks okay. that are full-time there. I think what was the stat Brian just gave, I think, from either end is that they've reduced, like, um, cases by 45% in just the last month. Yeah. It'd be good to get an update on that. I, I know. Think. I was just thinking that. Yeah. I was and like, what, what a positive thing do? to post on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe here we can come and do a little presentation just to kind of give you guys some stats. Uh, on top of that, is there an action item you want? No, no. I okay. just, since we were talking about yeah. potential, how to well, improve I mean, the services, I want to encourage continued. Uh, yeah, yeah and maybe so necessarily the line. Right. Right. I mean, maybe it's a goal. Maybe there is a stat goal that you guys decide that might be good to work towards. Work towards. Good. <laughs> yeah, we've been, we've been talking about yeah. that. <laughs> measurable. Yeah, measurable. Good. These are great. Any other uh, thoughts on this last strategic priority? We can encourage that was gentle. Would I would you say like enforce. <laughs> enforce. I mean, yeah. we can encourage and then enforce. You know, I, I, I just wanted to have a little more meaning. I don't know. That's just me. <laughs> mm. Okay. 
few minutes. Can you yeah. look at yeah. number three? Back, if, if, is council ready for that? Go okay. back and look at that objective statement. So the question is, does, do we want to wordsmith that more than what we already have? Everyone's afraid. Of Here, I will, I, will, I will add the few things I heard. What, what about if we said where people are safe and engaged in the community can live an active life and then we'll have that. Grove Covington is a community where people are safe and engaged in the community. An active life and all have access. Can live an active life and all have access to this community. It's just so, rearranging the yeah. words. I don't yeah, know. Just, I mean, yeah, just, yeah. I'm <coughs> wondering if Grove Covington as a community where people are safe or feel safe. Are, are safe. safe. Okay. Where people are safe. His grammar wants to change it to are engaged. Just that's the worst thing. All right. <laughs> you want to know, speak more to you than the other? Uh, well, I think. What's that, Matt? I think we were getting hung up on the end all have access yeah. to city. Oh, yeah. 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 Have have access. Access. yeah. I think that's a good objective. I mean, to, you can put where all people. Where all people. Where all people are safe no. or, or on the bottom. No, 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 oh. no all people. No, right here. Oh, right. Right. This, okay. Yeah, this was the. Yeah. So is this it? Grove Covington as a community where all people are safe, live an active life, are engaged in the community, and have access to city and social resources. We need to put equitable access, or is that implied by that? I think that's implied. Implied by that. Okay. All right. I, I think it's both. Yeah. So yeah. This is it. Do we have community twice? More too many times. Oh, we haven't tried. Are engaged. Are engaged and have access to the city and social services. Oh, no. Can we take community out? No, engaged like. No, I, I think engaged so. in the community. Is good. I'm just wondering if that's. I'm just wondering if we should grow Covington. They must be or grow Covington is a place where all people are safe with an active life and engaging in the social crisis. Well, this. No, you know that. You're not. Yeah, you're not. Okay. I'm not married to it. I just wondered if we could try to change the community. One of those communities that's a little bit too So you could say place place or city. Yeah. Place. 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 What if it's just grow coming to Yeah. I like that. To me, that's a place to go, not what the connotation for destination. Yeah, and destination I think speaks to something different than what this priority is. I think we do. I think we need to so yeah, destination. So that's a general. Yeah, I don't like the place either. It's far enough, like in the bottom one, it's closer. And that one. Yeah, yeah, it's too good. Up, upstairs, though. <laughs> what, what if it was something like this? Grove Covington is a community where all people are safe, live, live an active life. I don't know. I was going to say actively engaged. Yeah. I think because, you can use community twice because in the second sense you're saying and um, are engaged in the community. So yeah, well, yeah, the second one I think was out, right? I don't need more. So they yeah, put just back the yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so are, we good, are we good okay. with that? I'm good with this one. At least, okay. at least for now. So we meet again. <laughs> well, I think <laughs> now it sounds fine. It's fine. fine. Yeah. Okay, we thank you. Get a part you. Of the nope. Thank you all very much.